Okay, today we're going to talk about uh, crystals um, and a particular waveform that a lot of people are confused about. So um, let's move over to the spectrum analyzer and let me show you that waveform. And here's the waveform. Um, we're sweeping the crystal. We're just putting it in series between our tracking generator and our RF input on our uh, on our spectrum analyzer. So I'm just using clip leads here, and I'm just going I'm going straight through. So I've calibrated uh, the uh, tracking generator so that we get a nice uh, flat line right there at zero dB. And then when we put in the crystal in series, uh, we can see that. Uh, we're getting maximum transmission here, and it's attenuating the most here. And it's this very classic shape. We're sweeping, uh, we're centering at six, this is a six megahertz crystal, we're centered at six megahertz, and we're spanning 100 kilohertz, so you can see that it's, uh, that it's quite narrow. Um, a lot of people maybe understand that part of the curve, they don't understand that part of the curve, or they might just be confused all together, what's going on here? So I'm gonna try to explain that today. All right, as with most, most things, it's important to get some background first. Um, a lot of people try to jump in and understand things without learning the basics first. So uh, this might be one of those examples. So let's first talk about other types of circuits. Let's talk about, um, let's see, we'll do this one first. We'll do um, an inductor and a capacitor. This is called a series circuit, okay? and we will have an inductor in series with a capacitor. And we're gonna do the same exact same thing. We're gonna take this ugly mess of capacitors and, and inductors and we will, we will use this part of the circuit here. We're gonna go from, we're gonna go through this inductor and through that capacitor and hook that up to the uh, spectrum analyzer. All right, so let's disconnect our crystal and I will connect our series LC and we see nothing but let's go ahead and zoom out let's hear let's do frequency let's do a span of 10 megahertz let's see if we see anything oh there we go we see something there let's do frequency and uh, let's see where, where are we here right about 6.75 so you can see that um, we are um, seeing a peak, okay? So this particular circuit has a peak of uh, 6.75 megahertz, okay? Uh, the values that we're using, it's a two, tw it's, it's a 22 microhenries and a f 22 picofarad capacitor, okay? All right, so let's see, let's see if all of that makes sense or not. All right, hello, focus, there we go. Okay, so we have a 2, 2 microhenry and a 2, 2 picofarads, and we have no focus, there we go, gosh. Let me put it in the manual focus, let's do that again. All right, so uh, in a series resonant circuit, we have a particular formula 2 pi square root of LC. Um, and so you can find this in books, okay? And so our L is 22 microhenries and our capacitance is 22 picofarads. And we can get out our calculator and zoom out here. All right, so we have uh, uh, 22 to micros and 22 picos and the square root of that and two times that and pi times that and one over that we have uh, 7.23 megahertz okay 7.23 megahertz all right, uh, let's see here, do we have, I'm pretty sure that was the value of the capacitor I had. Let me, let me read it off here. Okay, I've just used an LCR meter and I've measured the, uh, the actual values of the parts that we have and let's see what kind of values those give us. Um, let's see, let's go here to, it's 23 microhenries 
and it's 26 picofarads. Square root, two times, pi times, one over. Okay, and we get 6.5 megahertz. Okay, 6.5 megahertz. And what were we measuring? I don't even remember now. Uh, you probably do. Uh, let's put it back in the machine there. I think it's closer. I think it's closer. So let's put this back in. Uh, 6.05 6 megahertz. Okay, so uh, we are doing pretty good with our measurements and, and our everything. So you, you, need to, you need to be aware that everything's going to be different. Um, I was measuring the actual values of the parts at one kilohertz. We're using them at, at six megahertz. So things are going to change, but we're getting, we're getting a very, very close value for between measurements and, and calculations. So, so that's working really good. Okay. So we've talked about, we've talked about this circuit. Okay. Now the other circuit that I want to talk about, I'll just draw it up in the front here to say paper is this one. Okay, we're gonna have a parallel circuit. Series circuit, parallel circuit, okay? So uh, let's hook that up to our machine, all right? There we go. Um, now we have a dip. So the series circuit gave us a peak and the parallel circuit gave us a dip, okay? And what does that mean in this particular measurement? It means that a peak is when the resistance of the circuit is basically zero. It's the lowest impedance or the lowest. If you're talking about this, you use the word reactance. I know there's always all these different words that all mean the same thing. We'll just call it resistance. Um, so uh, with this one, we could get a um, uh, lowest resistance. There's a place where both high frequencies and low frequencies both could go through these two things and there was a balance. Um, these guys block high frequencies, these guys block low frequencies, and there's some happy in between where they both work together and you get a, uh, the lowest resistance. And in this particular case, then it's maximum resistance. It's lowest resistance, maximum resistance. When you have maximum resistance, you get a dip because you can't get anything through it. And then when it's lowest resistance, it's easy to get things through it and you'll get a peak. All right. So we have a dip and we have a peak. All right. Well, guess what? We can put them both together. Let's get them together. Maybe there'll be some synergy. We're going to have a series circuit. And then we are going to put in a parallel circuit like this. Okay. So we're going to have an inductor and a, and a uh, 22, and this one's actually a 47. So we're gonna have a 22, and a 22, and a 47, and let's hook that thing up, see what it does. All right, what do we have? Well, we have a peak, and we have a valley. Um, and guess what? That looks an awful lot like a crystal, doesn't it? It goes up. But then it goes down and you have this this transition. Now, um, you can talk about a quantity called Q, like the letter Q, and that tells you how sharp these peaks are. So this particular circuit has a very low Q because things are kind of broad. But you get the idea that um, this particular circuit here is acting just like a crystal would. You draw you draw crystals like this. Okay, so if you take a look at literature, you look it up in books and stuff, you can learn all about crystals and they will show you the circuit. They will say, this is the uh, electrical equivalent of a, 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 a quartz crystal circuit. It has some inductance and it has some um, series resistance, uh, series capacitance, series capacitance and series uh, inductance. And they call this the series resonance 
and then they put in another capacitor here in parallel, and they call this the parallel resonance, and the series resonance and parallel resonance all together, uh, they kind of interact with one another, so they're not, the, the peaks that you measure individually aren't going to be exactly where they used to be, because these two things, these th this circuit and this circuit are now wholly in parallel, and um, so it'll be a little bit different than measuring them individually, but you get a circuit just like that. Now, this modeling is so good that you can actually use this, um, you can actually use this model in SPICE to simulate a real quartz crystal, and it works just great. You're going to get really, really strange values. It takes a lot of measurements to figure out what all these things are, but this capacitor here ends up being something like a 0 0.002 picofarad. So very, very, very small capacitance. This is actually usually pretty big. This might be something like 10 millihenries, right? And so the values may be very, very different in a real uh, model, but having wild numbers like this also gives you those real sharp cues that a, that a, crystal, that a crystal has. And so um, there are ways you can read about it. There are ways to actually measure each one of these individual things by doing some measurements and stuff and doing some mathematics to try to separate those things. Um, but yeah, you can uh, model these things. You can measure these things. You can play with an equivalent circuit, you could use this in a circuit. It will resonate right there. It's going to have a very low Q, um, but uh, yeah. Let's go back to the, uh, let's go back to the original crystal before we end the video here. All right, and there is our series uh, and our series resonance and our parallel um, resonance. The use of those words, I think, isn't technically correct. But that's what people use. <laughs> so um, the actual crystal, when it's being used, really only operates on this positive peak here. And the bandwidth of a crystal is usually specified um, between here and here. Um, I don't know a lot about crystals, but I, I just know a little bit. But let me show you, before we stop the video, let me show you uh, a little bit more and that might be for future future fun for you guys. If you zoom out, uh, you'll see other resonances as well, okay? And so the crystal is more complicated than just one inductor, one capacitor. It's actually resonating in three dimensions. It's an actual block of quartz. And so you may resonance resonate in one dimension or another dimension and each one of those geometrical resonances can be modeled with an inductor and two capacitors and um, there are actually these other um, peaks and uh, they can be close in by the crystal they can be pretty far away from the crystal but uh, yeah they're there too Okay, and I wanted to end the video on one other thing. People get confused thinking this is an oscilloscope trace. Okay, they're used to looking at oscilloscope traces. And you have to remember this is not an oscilloscope trace. This is a spectrum analyzer trace. And the units are decibels. And they're decibels of power. They're not voltage. They're decibels of power. And so the units are actually quite strange. But we can just change the units here. Let's change the units, units to, uh, uh, to actual volts. All right. All right. So I've changed the machine so that we're measuring in volts. Okay. We're in linear, we're in linear mode instead of logarithmic mode. And so, uh, negative infinity is just zero. Okay. So zero is at the bottom of this plot. Right. And so our crystal, is now just peaking and then coming back down again. And that's all there really is to it. Um, so if you think that crystals are magical because of that negative little dip there, it's just, it doesn't really enter into the circuit or not is really a question. It really is operating in this region here um, where we have this uh, maximum, uh, maximum throughput of the signal, which is where its reactance is the lowest, its resistance is the lowest, and you get this peak here, and that's the operating range of the crystal. Let's do a peak on that, and we're right there at 5.9988 megahertz.